Alright, so let's start off, let's get some liquid clear down here on the... Oh, I also was at the Hobby Lobby the other day and I found stand oil was on sale. I've never used stand oil. Um, so I mean, it was on sale for a lot, too. Like, I think I got this, this whole bottle for like five bucks. So, it's supposed to improve the flow. I don't know if I'll, how much I'll use it, but I'll, I'll give it a try on some things. That were, I don't think I'll use it. I, don't think I'll use it I might use it today. You know, because I think on the last painting I did some, I did some uh, work with uh, tree limbs. I used linseed oil. So we'll, you know, we'll, I'll try to talk about some of the different alternatives that you guys can the things that I do, if you don't want to do it that way, there's, there's oh, never one right way to do it. So We'll do another forest scene here. Let's get this sneaky clear in here. Alright, so somebody asked me about doing a an autumn scene. So let's start off by, let's mix up a little bit of paint. Let me clean this brush out. could do that would be kind of nice so I might try this next time how are you doing today Kathy the um wow I thought on a Saturday we'd have a bunch of people but I guess not the uh, it would be kind of neat to do this with um, some dioxazine purple lay this that same kind of a scene up so but anyway let's get some transparent colors and just kind of mix them up here on the palette so I'm going to use some Indian Yellow. I've not tried this mixture before, but we will see how it goes. I'm going to put some Alizarin Crimson up next to that, and then we'll mix it up. My tubes are getting to be a couple years old now, so they're kind of... The paint is really thickening up. But... Some colors you use more than others, so just the way it goes. Alright, so let's take... Uh, I'm going to take this yellow, this Indian yellow. I'm going to mix, I'm going to take more of it than crimson. I'm going to kind of mix it up here on my palette. Let's see what I get out of that. <laughs> and maybe a little more. So this is kind of where we've sort of a reddish orange. So I'm just gonna play with this a little bit down here on the I think I'll just play with this just a little bit. I do this quite often when I'm painting, so I might might get something from it. So we're just gonna grab some of this on here. And then let's get some. This might work. This might be. This might work for what I want to do. We'll see. We'll see. Where's my camera? I move my. Oh, I rearranged my colors. I have to get used to this new color layout. But all right, let's get some titanium white down there. I'm just gonna pick a little of this bit, a little bit of this up on a fan brush. I'm just going to try to try it out here and see what... Yeah, you know, that might work. That might, might work. Alright, so, yep, yeah, I think we'll, that's what... We'll try that. So, let me clean these two brushes off and we'll get started. I like to try to kind of do things like that so you guys can... I don't think many people address, they just start painting and, and sometimes they don't really address how to experiment with some stuff. Um, I don't really know what's going to go in right here, so I'm just going to take this little this little brush, you might see these at Hobby Lobby. I'm just take this and I'm just going to lift this paint right off, at least most of it. Oh. 
Alright, I'll just wipe down the paper towel. Okay, so let's get on with the rest of it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on a, I'm going to take this color I just created, this reddish orange color. I'm just going to kind of brush this in here. Now you're not going to see too much of a change from your side just yet. Both, um, so Ben, you now you wanted to create orange, why didn't you just use orange? Well, you know, I could have, um, but if I were to use like a cadmium orange, cadmium orange is, is not all that transparent. So, um, you know, it would have, it would have enforced itself a little bit here on it before I wanted it to, maybe. So, these transparent colors. I'm not going to do anything until I put some white on here. All right, so, all right, so that's all of that that I mixed up. Let's wipe the knife off on the canvas. No. Hey, Carolyn. You know, we're just kind of, um, we're doing, we're kind of doing a, a variation of the painting we did the other day. Some people asked how to do this, and uh, like, could you do it like an autumn scene? And you cer certainly could. So, here's what. So I don't know. If, I don't know how many of you guys are, are familiar with the color wheel. You guys, if you don't have one of these, I recommend it to you. But you know, I've got. So here's kind of my color scheme I'm, I'm thinking about using here. I've got orange, and right across from it, complementary, is blue, right? And then I've got. Um, I've also got some uh, yellow on here. I got some uh, Indian yellow. So those two colors are sitting side by side. So they're you know they're. They're uh, uh, associated with that, so um, we, can, we can kind of go in this range here, and, and then we'll kind of stick down in this blue. Um, we may even move a little toward violet as we go. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, but I, so that's kind of my thinking as far as how we're going to approach this. So let's get a fan brush, just like we did the other day. Let's get some white on the fan brush. I'm going to load this brush up pretty good. Now when you load the brush, don't just pull it through the paint. Um, wiggle it. And don't don't leave your paint in a glob. Pull it out flat with your knife and then just, that allows you to pull through the paint without, you know, globbing it up. And then just kind of wiggle it. And that will allow you to, to load those bristles just like that. So we got a lot of paint on here. You guys can see that, I hope. Alright. Me too. Me too. All right, so let's let's just kind of start laying it. We're gonna so we're gonna start off kind of razzle dazzle here, but we're gonna put some um, laying a little background. So let's do that. We're just kind of. <laughs> It's like kind of like a mess at the moment, but it'll, it'll clear up a little bit. Didn't really want to hit that corner that quite that hard, but that's okay. Alright, so I want a lot of color up there. Okay, let me just clean the brush here. Now one thing that I didn't do the other day. I don't think you really fall in an accident. I just decided not to do it that way. But I didn't soften the background before I did the trees. I did the trees and then I just softened it all at one time. So, but this time I'm gonna do a little different. Just show you that you can do it differently. And you get a little bit different effect. All right. So I'm just gonna kind of do this in a circle, alternating circles. I'm just kind of. Barely touching the canvas with this. How's your all's weekend going? You haven't. It, it's been raining here. Uh, rain. We had a thunderstorm that lasted for hours and hours and hours and hours yesterday, last night. So it's cooled down a little bit. I don't know if it'll stay that way, but sure, sure nice after all the heat we've had. So I'm just gonna kind of fluff this up a little bit.
Okay, so now I hope you can see how soft that is back there. It's, it almost looks kind of like a mist kind of back in there. Suggesting, when we put the trees in here, the brain will kind of suggest that there's, you know, tree branches and stuff back there. It's kind of funny. It, it looked more red than yellow, but it looks kind of yellow on the, on the monitor. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's do. Let's uh, let's mix up some colors for some trees. And I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna start off. I've got some phthalo blue left over here from the other day. So I'm gonna take a just. So I use. Well, actually, it, the phthalo blue is left over from the uh, sword and stone picture that I did. Um, the other day. So we're gonna take that we're gonna take that paint and use it. So let me just kind of scoop that up. I'm gonna just mix about one part midnight black to two parts of phthalo blue. Alright. Let me think about this a little bit. Let's put a few in here and see what we, what we want to do here. I'm going to use a number three fan brush to do this. Um, just like the brush I just had. I'm, I'm filling the, the bristles pretty full. Just like this. And we'll just put a few trees in here. I'm using the number three because it'll, it'll draw a skinnier tree. And I'm kind of looking for some trees to go in the background to start with. So let's kind of put a tree into the picture. And we'll just have it vanish behind this tree and then come out this way. And then let's put that tree over there. There we go. All right. Let me catch up here. Hey, Brenda. How are you? It's cloudy there. 89 degrees. Man, I wish we... <laughs> Last few days, we would have paid money for 89 degrees. It was like 98, 99, 97. Boy, my garden is taking a beat. And uh, I'm a big time gardener, so it, uh, whew, it, was, it was a battle. I had someone take care of my garden while I was on vacation, but of course, you know, I don't, you may not garden, but uh, if you do, you know, it's kind of hard to find somebody that'll do it just like you do it. And, um, you know, they do their best. I mean, it would have been dead if they hadn't helped me, but. All right, so we're just going to carry on putting in a few more trees. I think. I'm kind of deciding a few little things right here. I don't want, like, the whole. I'm not trying to draw the whole forest, but I want to have enough trees in here. And I think today what we'll do, a little different than what we did the other day, we'll maybe insinuate some bushes back up in here. So I think I'll do that like this. So we use a fan brush to create bushes. You don't see people do that too much, but... So the way I'm doing that... Instead of using the, you know, if you, if you push, I'm going to use this plexiglass to kind of show you guys. If you push, can you guys see that? Hang on. I thought I just moved those lights the other day. 
Now let's try it again. Now let's try it. Yeah, I still got reflection. How about that? That's a little better. But it's still good. Alright. So if you push straight down, you, you kind of get this, or you push straight up, you get this kind of telltale fan brush. But if you take it, you know, you kind of get a smiley face or a frowny face. But if you take this to edge and tap it like this, it gives you a lot more control over your fan brush and you can kind of sculpt your bushes in that way. Does that make sense? Yep, plexiglass. It, it's really nice too because I didn't do it the other day, but on my own fault, so I had a little extra work to do after this painting today. But you can actually just take a baby wipe and wipe it back off when you're done, like that. So, and that makes, for, makes it easy to show people how to do it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's tap some more bushes up in here. That's a little different than what we did the other day, but I want it to be different a little bit. Maybe some back up here. You'll see this paint's been going a long way. So this is what the third or fourth layer of paint that we're putting here. And we haven't thinned it yet, so... And of course, it's moving across this liquid clear pretty good. And I'm just kind of letting letting it fade a little bit. If you can see, it's kind of it's not quite as blue as it was. And that'll kind of give us a little bit of an impression that it's pushing back, pushing back. I think we'll just make this a big push right here. So, kind of adjusting the color palette a little bit because that orange that I put on there didn't orange up the way I wanted it quite the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to leave it for now and just let it sit. So this is, this is going to have a stream in it. So let's think about that a little bit. Let's look at the color wheel here. Yeah. So I think we will... Change. I'm going to shift this. Hang on a second. I need to move some paint around. Move the monitor around, find some paint. That's not what I want. Looking for a particular color to switch to. I'll find it here in a second. First thing I'm going to do is take this. I want to adjust this color scheme just a little bit. So let's take this. You might not notice this is going to darken this up. I'll leave that blue on there, but we're going to kind of mix this paint with it. We'll just darken all that in right there. Da, 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 da. Alright, I like that. Oops. Alright. Oops. Every time I say oops, it means I have an opportunity to do something. <laughs> Alright. Let's carry on here. Okay, so I've got an, I've introduced a new transparent color over these trees, over these little bushes. And it's dioxazine purple. I don't know if you've ever used that color. It's a it's a powerful color. I mean, it is it is a it is a powerful color. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave that on for right now. Just let that let that in blue kind of sit there for a second. 
take a little bit about this stream. Hey, Marianne, thank you. We're just kind of piddling here on something that somebody asked us to try to do today. So, um, all right, so let's set the fan brush down for a little bit. And let's go to, let me clean my, I didn't clean my one inch brush out. Hang on a second. Done, this is going to give us a pretty snazzy looking color here. So let's just kind of I'm going to come up right in here and I'm just going to start brushing this in. Just laying color in right over the top of that liquid clear. I'll put it somewhere here and we'll kind of brush a little bit up in there because I'm going to use that area. <laughs> I'm just using a one inch brush to, light, to do this. This is called working with what you got. The, the background color that I listed, that I put together didn't come out quite the way on canvas that I thought it would. But that's okay. That's why we say, let's discover this painting in the canvas. I'm just going to take this transparent doxazine purple. I know up there it probably doesn't look very very uh, transparent, but it really is. You'll see in just a second. Rosalie! Hello! Okay, we're going to do... Okay, so we've got the dark color in there. We've got a few bushes in there. They're kind of floating though, so I may, I may close those bushes up a little bit. I think I will. I think I will. I think I will. I think I'll pull those, push those trees back. I'll go ahead and put this color in here. I can pull the trees back down later if I want to. There we go. Let's push them up like that. I'm going to use the edge of the brush just to make that, make all this not quite so even. I want it to be uneven. There's bushes and stuff in there, right? All right. Now, I'm, I'm starting to like it better. Okay. Let me clean this brush. So, really what we're kind of doing, in a way, is we're working, we're working our way out of a hole. The yellow, the transparent color we put on originally didn't really pan out to the color that we were looking for. All right, this is a product that I just bought not too long ago. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this works out. So this is a uh, liquid yellow. I don't have a lot of it, but I'll scoop some of this out. On the palette. Da, 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 da. All right. Now, before I get going too much, I think what I want to do before I get ripping get ripping along here, let's take some more of this color. This is pretty thin, so we'll see how. Let's kind of. Stick a few tree branches in here. Uh, you know, uh, people get a little worried sometimes when they're. I um I have a couple of students that that I teach. Um, most of my students are handicapped and. Uh, they're really better at painting tree branches than I am because their hands, sometimes their hands will wiggle. And that works to your advantage in this particular case. I am, um, my hands are not all that steady, but they don't need to be for tree branches. 
no pattern for tree branches. They go every which way, upwards, downwards. Matter of fact, uh, one of the things I try to do is paint with my right hand. I know on the video it looks like I'm painting right-handed, but I'm actually painting left-handed most of the time. I don't know why Facebook feels compelled to mirror image things. But I'm a tech guy, so I can't think of a technical reason why they do that. I'm a retired tech guy. Let me say it that way. I just want to put a couple more in here. I know this is probably like as exciting as watching. Uh, well, I was going to say paint dry, but that would be kind of oxen oxy wouldn't it? <laughs> you don't want all your tree branches like to be directly across from each other either. That's kind of you know, like one on the side and one over there. Cause that's not how trees grow. I used to raise bonsai trees, and. Uh, I tell you what, man, trees got a mind of their own. All right, I want to put a couple more on this guy right here. Just a couple. Just a couple. Let's put a bigger branch and then like scribble out a couple like that. And then let's just put let's just put a few little doodads back up in here. Things that attract just a little bit of attention. Okay, let's put some bushes in. So we'll try this color out. We'll see how this is going to work out for us. <laughs> I don't know about that. They're, they're, they're pretty good kids. I mean, well, one of them's a kid and one of them's a, an older guy. He's younger than me, so I guess that makes me a, more than an older guy. But uh, he had a stroke a couple years ago and, and uh, in his stroke class, they had him uh, painting coloring book giraffes and stuff. And I was like, ah, you don't need to be doing that. So I met him at a show last year, and uh, we got to talk. And I was like, I gave him the ad I gave him the number of a, a Bob Ross instructor to call. But I think it was kind of, it was pretty, it was pretty um, evident his wife wanted me to teach him. So... I hadn't taught anybody then. I was like, I don't know if I can teach, but I will give it a try. So we got together, and he's, he's been a great student. He's fantastic. He's a good painter. How's that look to you guys? A little, a little dark. That purple's kind of... That paint, this paint doesn't seem to have enough pigment, but we'll, we'll, deal, we'll work with it. Imagine with that liquid yellow, I mean with the liquid white and on top of liquid yellow. I think I get more pleasure out of class than with those guys than they might <laughs> sometimes. I don't know. They're good guys. All of, well, the, the younger students is a, is a female. She's, she's awesome. Alright, so I'm just putting like a few little branches and stuff in here. Some of them I'm kind of applying paint and some of them I'm kind of not. I'm just kind of insinuating the paint. Just making adjustments as we go. As I make them, I'll, t I'll tell you what I'm doing. So you know, we kind of start off with uh, 
a mixture of phthalo blue and uh, a little bit of midnight black on those trees. The ones in the back, I'm going to leave those that way, but I'm going to pull some of these a little bit forward in a second. We'll see how that goes. And then um, we'll start we'll start laying in some grass and see what, what we want to do with that. I will be, hang on a second, let me pick out some different paint. I need to move my paint. Oh, here it is. I haven't forgotten my point, but I wanted to make this look kind of odd to me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little test right now. So we're going we're gonna to test some more paint. Let's test it. So we're going to bring up some of this color. We'll see how this does for us. brush a lot because purple leaves the color out. So we got a little bit of a lag here on the, the monitor, which is fine. Alright, let's start let's let's decide well let's fix the trees first. Alright, so we're gonna slap we're gonna slap together some work here on these trees. Let's bring a couple of these trees forward. Let's bring uh, let's bring this dude forward. So we're gonna go back over the trees just pull this one down. And by pulling it down in front of the in front of the bushes, we pull it closer to us on the canvas, right? There we go. Pull this one forward just a little bit. And I think I'll pull this one forward just a little bit. A little further than that one. Alright, so let's take... You know, the thing that the thing I like about, um, especially working with, with uh, the older guy, is uh, I really like the fact that he asked me, why do you do that? Or why do you do it that way? Is there another way to do it? And I, was, and I always like other ways of doing things. So it's it's so much fun. It's it's challenging from that from that standpoint. So um, while I'm painting these trees back up, I'll tell you guys a little bit more about me. I told I told you I was a retired IT guy, but. Uh, I'm also a novelist. I've written 14 novels. You'll see them on my fine arts page. If you rummage around there in the photo albums, you'll see some of the covers. Um, I'm working on a new novel right now. I've got a new series of novels that are under development that I haven't actually gotten go Well, I got the first book done, but I haven't done the rest of them yet. But, uh, I garden. I have all sorts of hobbies. I, you saw, I'm sure you can see my lamps up there. I recover, um, 19th century oil lamps and donate them to museums and historical sites since they're usually strapped for cash. All right, now before I get rolling too good, too far on this, um, and I have I have two I have four kids, two that live nearby me. The other two live out. Well, one of them <laughs> one of them lives in a in a in a uh, tractor trailer, so he uh, he's traveling all the time. All right, let's let's go ahead and start dealing with the stream just a little bit. What do you say? I'll tell you what, though. We're going to start off. We're going to start off with a smaller fan brush and then work up to a larger fan brush. So, although nothing nothing's really going to change here, other than the fact I'm I'm loading the brush the same way, right? Um, instead of pulling it straight through, I kind of wiggle the brush as I bring it through to fill up the fill it up, fill it up. All right, so I'm going to start right off right here. Whoa. We'll start pulling this forward. It's going to have a purplish hue to it. The water is. Okay. 
and I'm just only going to bring it about this far, and then we're going to we're going to talk about the first thing that somebody, the first other problem that somebody asked me about. How do you put? How do you go about rocks in your stream? Well, it depends what kind of rocks you're trying to make. I know, man. I. <laughs> I, th I think sometimes, Marianne, I'm like the, uh, what is it they say, jack of all trades, master of none, or something like that. One of my friends, like years ago, um, one of the guys I worked with, said to me one day, he's like, yeah, you are you are like a real-life renaissance man. And I was like, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't insulted or nothing. I just, I came home and I was like, I, I gotta go look that up. I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right, so I hope it means something nice. So we're gonna take, let me get some, let me get some paint out here. I'm gonna get some little bit of dark sienna. We're gonna pop a stream in. We're gonna pop a rock in the middle of the stream. Now this rock is not gonna be jagged. It's just gonna be kind of a round rock. So I'm gonna just show you how to do that really quick. So I'm using, I'm using a, uh, a filbert, and I'm gonna double load the brush. So. And I think I'm going to load it, well, let's see, I'll tell you what, let's just load it for right now, let's just load it with some white. So you can see here, I've got white on this side, and a little bit of white on that side, but not very much. And on the other side, I'm going to load dark sienna. So now I've got white and dark sienna, white and dark sienna. So what we're going to do, get my trusty plexiglass back out here. Move this camera so it's easier for me to see. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring the brush in at just a slight angle. We're going to push it on sideways like that, and then just slightly turn it. Push it, slightly turn it. Push it, slightly turn it. And it just creates those little rocks, just like that. Pretty neat, huh? It took me, I mean, I could not get that in my brain about... I was trying to make that as those rocks a lot harder than I was. Trying to hold this. Oh, please do. Yeah. I'm on Amazon. You can find all my books on Amazon. Make sure I get this painting back in the right place. I gotta wait for the monitor to catch up so I can make sure I got it in the right place. Those are those lamps there, those are ones that are waiting to be restored. Um, the ones on the bottom shelf are actually already restored. They're by a particular company called Riverside Glass that was in West Virginia for in the 1800s but um, I have almost 500 and so you're just seeing a, a small a small little bit of those all right so I want the light side up the light side up whatever color I choose to use on you light side up so we're just gonna pop a few of these rocks like right on the edge of the stream like this Maybe just a couple more. All right, I need to reload my brush just a tad. The brown's doing good. The white's kind of fading out. So we'll just kind of let's just lay some rocks in here. And, you know, like maybe this is like a little piece of shoreline or something. I don't know. I don't know where even well where the stream's going to go just yet. So, all right. So we put some rocks on top of the stream. Yeah, I, they're down from six hundred. <laughs> I think my wife is about, I, my wife, bless her heart, she's a darling, she puts up with me, <laughs> best wife ever, alright, so, um, now, so let's, so the stream's kind of meandering, right, so it's kind of meandering over, let's get a little bit more white on there, though, I think, let's just load a little bit up on both sides, so let's, me, let's let this stream kind of meander on over here, around these rocks. It's, it's not a very big hurry. And then it's like right here though. I think I want to, this, this fan brush, it, since it's small and the bristles are short, it's not very flexible. So I'm gonna switch up to a number three fan brush for this little part that I wanna do. So I'm loading the fan brush the same exact way. Nothing different here. Full paint. And right around here, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna put put a waterfall. So we can just get pull it over and down. And over this side, we're gonna pull it over and down. 
but you don't want to go over the same spot too much. So you might say, Benjamin, why did you just like split that? So we're gonna put a rock in there. Um, in the other painting, the rocks were way down here, but we'll just we'll just put one up here just for the heck of it, just so we can do it a couple times in case people want to see it. All right, so let's let's take a palette knife. And if you uh, have seen my rock video, if you've seen my uh, mountain videos, this is basically the same technique. I've got a little roll of paint right on the edge of the small edge side of the knife. I'm going to bring it up here, right into this water. And actually, I'm going to cut into the waterfall just a little bit, because I want the rock to sit in front of the water. And I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to pull it down. So I've been painting for a little over two years. Um, my first year... I painted about 260 paintings, 265 paintings, something like that. I paint a lot. Um, I probably paint more than I should, but I can't help myself. And especially if I happen to sit down one day and watch a Bob Ross show. Oh my god, he, Bob gets me inspired. Today, it was Emily Jean. Emily Jean was painting a horse, and I was like, oh man, i got to just get up off my lazy behind. So now we're just taking some... A little bit of white. I'm going to push that in. We're not going to do too much highlight on this side of the... Well, I guess we could. A little bit of highlight on this rock. There. All right. Can you guys see that? Yovette! There's everybody. This is Yovette Bronson. She is a CRI with the Bob Ross Company. She, I have learned a lot from her. She's, she's a great lady. She's a fantastic lady. Okay, so thank you, Yovette. We're just we're just kind of trying out some different color scheme things and fiddling with some questions that people had off the last painting. So um, you guys should check out Yovette on on uh, on YouTube. She's got a great channel. All right, so we want to push a little bit, push a little bit of rock and stuff right up here by this. And I don't want this to be kind of flat. I want it to kind of be mountainy, well, not mountainy, but hilly a little bit. So we'll just kind of continue with this, this orange color. That seems to go really well with this purple. Now we're going to come back in a second and do a little bit more with that. And we're going to do a little bit more with the rock as well. So we're just kind of bringing the landscape up even with what the other stuff we got going on here. Thank you. You're 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 such a good teacher, too. Really, seriously. I love to watch your videos. You're kind of a household name around my house. <laughs> you and Anthony and a few other people. Nick, Nick, Nick uh, Hankins. All right. So I want to I want to inject some some highlight here. I've, I did it sort of kind of with these rocks when I did these rocks up here. You see they're kind of highlighted coming in from this way. So we're going to highlight this rock. And we're going to highlight some of this uh, landscape a little bit. I don't want to do a lot of it because I don't want this painting to be all that bright really. I want the stream to kind of be the focus. We're going to take a little bit of this, a little bit of titanium white, just a little bit. Put a little bit on this edge. A little bit over this way. Like that. Because most of it's going to be right here where the stream is, right? We'll push it back a little bit, just darker, darker, darker. And I didn't quite get the grass up here on this, this stream. I mean, up on this area. So we will, we will mess with that in a second. That's really good. The, the, um, um, I had some people on my video just the uh, day before yesterday that were asking about about some waterfalls. So I think I think a lot of people are interested in that. So we're going to take here and we're just going to create create a little bit of mist down here around the bottom of this waterfall. Just a little bit of mist. Now, if you want, one thing that you can do. And we're going to kind of start to narrow this stream back up a little bit. I don't want I don't want it to get too wide out here in the painting too far away. 
So I'll start pulling it. I'll start pulling it this way. Make sure you keep your lines horizontal. We'll see where it goes here. I'm using the very edge, the tip edge of the fan brush here. And then let's, now let me clean this brush off. I got too much purple into this paint. So I'm just gonna wipe, the wipe it out of the brush. I'm not gonna clean the brush. Put just a little bit of highlight in here. Like that. And then let's create another waterfall. Maybe a little bigger one this time. And I think we will, yeah, I think we'll keep that there for now. kind of fun. I don't have any idea where the heck this painting is going. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's, uh, for me, that's what makes it fun. I, I kind of start off with, uh, I mean, we started off saying we were going to do something like we did the other day, and, and we're, we're, <laughs> we're pretty far off right now. We may, end, or other differences is we have a forest and we have a stream. Other than that, it's not, it's not too much the same painting. All right, so let's continue on with this. I do want to touch it right up here a little bit. There we go. And then I think right along in here, it's about time to put you know another point of interest. So we'll we'll do that here in a little bit. Let's come back with that filbert brush and let's put a few more let's put a few more rocks in here this time well, I'll tell you what let's put them up here in the landscape some too uh, a couple like right now you get too high enough paint probably one of the biggest mistakes you can make is not having enough paint on your brush let's try a different color set there we go There's no really, I don't know of any rock numbering rule. What's enough rocks and what's enough enough? Just whatever, whatever it happens to be, whatever you want it to be. All right. So let's come back with a little bit of that. Let's come back with a little bit of, I'll tell you what, let's, How's that highlight look to you guys? We're just putting a little bit of that in here. A little bit more. Let me kind of fade as it trips off to the side. And let's get, pick up a little bit more for this other side. So this highlight's a little bit darker than what we had before. All right. Sunny D, how are you, girl? How's that new studio? You haven't said much about it. Or maybe I was on vacation and I missed it, because I was on vacation. I didn't announce it on Facebook, because I didn't want people to come knock on my door at my house while I was gone. Just only to find out I wasn't here. We didn't have a house sitter, so... The kids came over and checked on it now and again, though. Tell you what, let's add another, let's stick another tree in here this time. I 
think we'll put one. I don't know where I want to put it. All right. It doesn't feel like it ought to go on that side. Uh, let's put one right here. Yeah. And then let's, let's put another one like right here. All this painting is getting busy, but we're mostly trying to answer some questions about things. And one of them was about the trees. So that day, we were highlighting the trees. I'm just going to try this here. We were highlighting them with, uh, we highlighted them with a brush and a palette, and a palette knife, both. Um, so let's do that. I'm just going to think about this for a second, how I want to do this. Let's see how, let's see how this looks. I think we'll leave this tree with a little bit of highlight. We've got room for the contrast right here, so. Now you can, you can put this kind of bark stuff on couple different ways, um, or at least I do. Uh, I don't really have a favorite one way or the other. So let's, let me show you how I do that. So you can take, you got a small little bead of paint on there. Mine's a little flatter now because I've been doing stuff with it. But you can actually take it, turn this around some more. You can run it this way down the canvas, making sure you don't put your finger on top of the knife. If you do that, you're going to get like a peanut butter smear like that. That's not what you're looking for. So keep your fingers up, up back off the knife, off the top, hold on the side, and you can push it down, down. Let me get a little bit more paint on here. Maybe you can see it better. So you can you can either push it or pull it up or you can pull it down. It doesn't matter. Or you can put it on there and pull it a little bit. You put it on there and pull it a little bit. You'll see Wilson Bickford does that kind of stuff with his uh, birch trees. If you've ever seen seen Wilson's work, he does some pretty snazzy birch trees. All right, so we'll turn around and get back to get back to this painting. That was and it's our intermission. All right, <laughs> all right. So we just put a little bit of highlight up here in this little bit of forward tree. And then we'll pull some on this one too. The color I'm using is that dioxazine purple, the same color of the tree, with just a smidgen of titanium white. I'm not trying to focus on the whole tree. I think I'll be able to tell one tree from the other here. Let's get, get on the tree first. There's a lot of trees in this forest. So that time, I kind of did a little bit of a push down and pull. You can see a little bit of difference in the bark from that technique. Sorry, I got to block your all space here, but I'm not tall enough to reach the top. I'm a short guy. All right. So, not on purposely, but. You can see that these trees, as they're coming in from the outside, they're coming in closer to the um, closer to the creek. So that'll pull that viewer's eye in toward the middle as they go in. I'd like to say I did it on purpose, but I didn't consciously do it on purpose. Let me say it that way. But it's something to think about. All right, we need to give these guys a couple branches. I don't want a lot of branches. It's going to cover the, a lot of the forest up if I throw that too much. So let's just, I'm going to use two different script liners to do this. And we'll see which one I like the best here in a second. I 
Yeah, that's what I thought. Something is something is amiss with that script liner. Let's try this one. carry on here. So while I'm painting this on here, I'll talk a little bit about the sword and the stone painting I did yesterday. Um, it's the first time I've used that technique. The entire painting was done in acrylics underneath as an underpainting, and then it was painted with oils over the top. I've not done that before. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was interesting. It's challenging. Um, Marion Dutton uses that. If you guys ever follow Marion, she's really good. There are so many good instructors on around the world that share their talent with us. All right. All right. Let's leave that be. All right. So let's. One of the people asked me about what they're asking about was kind of the cliff face. So I'm thinking about messing with this waterfall a little bit more. But let me lay in some, let me see how I'm going to go about doing that. There's a couple things here we could do. Whether we do them is a different story. All right, so let's get, so we're just going to lay in this, this dark sienna, just like it is, just right out of the tube, over the top of this purple. Size cliff face down here. So I'm putting a pretty good bit of paint on the canvas as well. Of course, it's going over the top of the purple. Oh, I just thought of something we could try. Oh, that'd be cool. Let's try. So we're going to try something a little. Since I was painting this, I just thought of something we could do, maybe. Let's. I never tried it. We'll give it a spin. If we don't like it, we'll scrape it off. Alright. So let's say on this waterfall, let's say, let's say, you know what, I'm going to need a little bit more of that brown. Let me go. Nope, let's let it. If I would learn to just put my tubes back. When I pick them up, I'd be good. I know I gotta be looking right at. All right, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Doesn't Sunny have a good Facebook page? She has a nice art group too. Sunny's just a nice person. All right. Well, can't find that, so we'll just. Pill with it. We'll do something different here, a little bit different. I'll give me a chance to try out this new paint I just bought. No, no, no. Oh, now that I've done that, I've, I see the paint. There it is over there. More, a little more than that. Alright, so let's try. Let's do that on the other side too. Let's make it kind of uneven. Okay. All right, so we could do the waterfall first, or we could do the cliffs first. But I think we'll do the cliffs first. All right, so we're gonna take some white 
and some, let's see how that looks. I kind of like that. Let's see how this looks. If you don't, if you don't use a palette knife much, because it, it's you find this this layering part is kind of hard to do. Just let me encourage you not to do that. Just become friends with this knife because it can do so so many things for you. And there are so many different people out there that do teach lessons on this that you can can learn how to do it. Just kind of randomizing this a little bit. I'll go back here in a second. We'll put some more. Oh, you probably couldn't see it, but there's a series of strokes through there that just look like, I don't know, it might have been where I first laid the paint on there. It didn't look right to me. I'll look up in a second, look at the monitor, you guys, in case anybody's talking to me. Uh... Now, just like I did the other day, we've kind of, we added the highlight on there, and now we're going to kind of add some darker colors in over the top of that. Excuse me. Oh, I didn't bring my lemonade down today, did I? This dark will enhance the shadows that come out on your on your cliff face. So you can see as we go, you can see kind of see some of the highlight disappear. Throw some little something extra in here. Uh, da -da. Put some black, bring some black in. Ooh, it's not, that didn't come up right. There we go. Just kind of, we got kind of some hard lines right there from where we put that in. So let's just take take our grass color, kind of tap this in around the top of the edge. And that'll blend it, blend it in there a little bit. Pull a little bit of highlight, a little bit, a little bit.
So let's do this with the waterfall. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that waterfall. Take this waterfall right here. Hey Jean, how'd I miss you? How'd I miss you when you came in? All right, so let's we're getting close to winding up here. So let's do a few let's do a few things here. Let's take some dark color, push some bushes up in here. So this is still I'm I'm not pushing black up in here. I'm pushing purple. be the same size so let's kind of push it like that so we're going to try two different types of highlighting here we'll see what two different colors anyway maybe we use them both but Ooh, that's a long that's a long slender waterfall uh, <laughs> so I'm just going to mix a little bit of this Cad orange. I may have to get some liquid white out. Well, I'll tell you what. No, no. Oh, you know what? Hey, yo, Pat, have you ever used stand oil? I just, they had some on sale this week at uh, Hobby Lobby for like 80% off. And so I was like, all right, maybe I'll try that. So let's see what we get here. We're not pushing, we're not, if you, if you mix this just right, so I mix this with a little bit of linseed oil. And if you mix it, or it's just kind of lighter, it won't, uh, you don't have to push very hard. You have to push hard, you, you don't have it mixed up well enough. All right, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of this color, just a little bit. I don't know if it'll show up down in here in this deep color, but we'll find out. I'll push some of it in here anyway. We'll see. Yeah, I'm, it's it's supposed to really help flow, but I get I haven't found anything I wanted to use it for in particular just yet, but. All right, so let's uh, brush these highlights out before I forget about them. I mean, these uh, reflections. I just want these to barely show up tonight. It looks like they're just going to barely show up. Let me get these little brush marks out of here. There we go. Bring this on forward a little bit more. Now, this is not straight titanium white. It's got just a tad of that cat orange in it. All right. I'm liking that. Okay. Um, if you wonder why I clean my brushes so much, I suffer from ADD, so I don't want to walk off and leave a brush uh, that wasn't cleaned. And I have done it more than once, so <laughs> so I keep them clean. I just keep them clean. So I clean them up. If I was Bob Ross, I'd be getting all kinds of cheers for cleaning my, my brush off. All right. So we're just going to put some water lines in here. Maybe we'll keep it kind of... Pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. We're really kind of pushing this water line in there. All right. Then I want to clean my knife off. I'll pick up some more. Kind of run some other others out here. Oh, I think the water looks pretty good the way it is. Really. 
I'm going to put some over here where it's a little dark. All right, so this is a little different than what we did the other day, but the other day we did put a couple islands out here, so let's do that real quick. Um, so we're just going to take this, this purple, it's nice and dark, and we'll, we'll put an island like right here. No, it needs to be dark enough. Come on, buddy. There we go. This is going to be just kind of like a big giant rock, really. If you think about it, the way it's built. And then we'll put one like right here, where it's already a little bit dark. And we'll, we'll define it with the highlight. The other day, we didn't really put any... Uh, so one thing, yeah, I was going to talk to you about that. I forgot about that. We put these in. The other day we put them in. It kind of indicated like the water was kind of flowing out this way, which might be your assumption, um, which is fine. But um, you could assume, say that this waterfall's flowing into a river, right? That's going this way. And if it is, really what changes is, is how you put your water lines on. Oh my, that doesn't want to stick. All right, hang on a second. There we go. Just tap it into a little bit of, of uh, into just a little bit of linseed oil. You can use, uh, you could use a uh, photos paint thinner if you wanted to. You don't have to. Something to thin the paint up. Now I'm just kind of pulling this up a little bit, kind of making it look a little grassy. And then just to make those look a little more like a little more like the cliffs, we'll stick, stick some dirt in here. So let's do that. And then we'll put some water lines in. Now I think we'll call it a day. Alright, so let's uh oh yeah. Alright, let's put the uh, let's put the dirt in first, I think. So we'll just I'm actually kind of using a marbled mix here. I don't have too much of a straight flat pull line, but I think it'll work just fine. is where you can see it, what we're going to do. We're just kind of pulling this in among the grass. Like that. Maybe a little bit like right here. That would look pretty snazzy, I guess. Alright. So, you see by putting this just a little bit higher than this one, we've kind of created like a, the island's kind of hooked instead of just being straight across, right? Drop some water lines. So, for instance, we can move this water line out here like this. And maybe put a little bit back here. And make it kind of look like the water is flowing around this island, right? Do the same here. Just pull it out a little bit like this. Toward the end. And then pull it back up in here like that. Let's put a little bit out here. All right. I think that'll do it. Now you could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I keep them clean because I will sure. I walked down here today and there was one uh, laying here from yesterday and I thought, oh no. But I had cleaned it. It was just laying in the wrong spot. I had to put each brush back in the same spot. And that's why sometimes you'll see me when I'm talking. I'll lay down a paint tube and I'll forget where they are. Oh, now one thing I did talk about yesterday, and I'll, just, I'll go over it again, in case you didn't see it, the, um, and then we'll be done. These water lines, when you first lay them in there, you know, depending how hard you push, they can be relatively sharp. If you want them to be farther back in the background, you can just brush over them really lightly like this, and it pushes them right back. Softens them, pushes them right back. Just like that. 
So we did pick up a little bit of that orange. Can you guys see that in the video right there? Like right here and right there. All right. Well, listen, it's been a great time. Um, I, kinda, I think I got accomplished everything I needed to do. Um, I hope that I hope that answers the questions about how you do the rocks and oh you know what I just thought of something I forgot the I was thinking earlier we have some like reflection coming this way we could take just a little bit of this bright orange and touch it in like just touch it in like right here on this rock and give it a little bit more just a little bit more shine there you go what do you think Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. Yeah, but it's it's been a good time. I, I had a good time. I I uh, I was very lucky to have a lot of people help me out when I first began watching videos, whether it's Brandon Thomas or Anthony or Wilson Bickford. Um, I've tried to build some lessons around things that those guys haven't already covered, you know, or things that, or if just people ask me about things, the problems that they're having, I try to. Do that. So if you think of something after this that you want to see, um, uh, if you're looking for something that's done in acrylics, Anthony uh, Anthony's videos are really good. Uh, if uh, so is uh, painting with Jane. She's really good too. Oh, you know, I thought now I'm sitting here talking. I just thought of something else I could do. All right, hang on, hold on. Does this ever happen to you guys when you're painting? You're like you think you're done, and then you're like, oh, you know what? I could do this. Let's just put a little bit of highlight up on this grass. Like that. Yeah. Make it that stands out a little bit. Alright. Okay. Oh. I think I'll go fix up some chow and thank my cat for not howling while I was trying to make a video today, which is usually what he does. You guys have a good Saturday what's left of it and have a good Sunday and I will see you back here the next day or two have a good one